Hi everyone, today I've decided to make a traditional pasty. And the reason I've called it a traditional pasty is because a fair while ago I was walking through the streets of London and I came across this little traditional Cornish pasty shop. And I thought I'll have some of that because I like my pasties. So I bit into this half shaped, moon, half moon shaped thing and uh, I was a bit disappointed actually, I thought to myself that's four and a half quid down the pan isn't it? Because it was just chunks of meat and sliced potato, some onion chucked in there as well I think. It was actually a bit like a steak and kidney pie and that ain't nothing like what I grew up calling a pasty. So what I'm going to cook today is what I call a traditional pasty. I'm not going to call it a Cornish pasty because it's not a Cornish pasty, it's a traditional pasty with minced meat. Um, feel free to leave comments below. Uh, Click the subscribe button as well whilst you're at it. <laughs> Apart from that, before anyone slates me, um, these pasties are not a Cornish pasty or a traditional pasty is normally made with short crust pastry. I'm gonna make mine with puff pastry because I like puff pastry and I think it tastes better. Um, it's just the way it is. But yeah, traditionally you'd make them with short crust pastry. So yeah, traditional Cornish pasty. Also to the older veterans probably know it as a tiddy oggy. So yeah, if you've got uh, any comments on that, leave them below as well. Uh, apart from that, let's get cooking. So the ingredients we're gonna need for this dish are Carrots, some minced beef, potatoes, I'm using King Edwards but your choice whatever you want to use, onions, fresh swede, make sure it's fresh not frozen. And of course, some puff pastry. Yes, I have bought the puff pastry because I can't be bothered to make puff pastry myself and the stuff you buy is pretty much better than what I'd make anyway. It's an absolute pain in the um, rear to make. So yeah, I've gone and bought some. So puff pastry. So the first thing I'm gonna do is cut up all my veg. Now, I'm not gonna take you through the rigmarole of cutting up all the veg because it is all very simply just cut into small dice very small dice I'll give you an idea with this onion a small demonstration for demonstration purposes so basically without cutting your fingers off you want all your veg cut into dice, about that size. About the same size as your minced meat, basically. So everything sort of amalgamates together. Same with the carrot, same with the swede, and same with the potato. So there you have it, all your veg nicely chopped up. Uh, for those of you with black and white TVs, the carrots are the orangey things on that plate. In a hot pan, a little bit of oil, olive oil, not too much because minced beef can be a little bit fatty. In with the mince. Shake it up. In with the onions. Just let them sweat off a little bit in the side here. Okay. 
some salt. This is salt. And loads of fresh ground pepper. Really fresh ground pepper is part of what makes this dish. It gives it that flavour. If you don't like pepper then don't put too much in but it really is complementary to the traditional pasty. Add the rest of the page. Now I've also got a little bit of fresh rosemary there because it gives it a nice little nice little kick. And I, might, I know you might think this is a lot of vegetable but to be honest with you by the time it's finished it all breaks down and mingles in together and in days of old where this recipe traditionally came from it did predominantly have a lot of vegetables in it because meat was very expensive and uh, they couldn't afford meat so they literally bolted it up with loads of vegetables and shame to Shame to ruin old habits, isn't it? I mean, meat still is expensive, but in comparison, in the old days, you you know, if you wanted to put meat in your food, you had to be royalty. And if you weren't royalty and you did put meat in your food, you got punished. Hard labour. Apparently, well, I wasn't around in them days, but that's what I've been told. So that's your traditional pasty mix. And what I'm going to do now is I've got some boiling water. Literally pour in some boiling water and then that I'm going to leave for about an hour just to cook out and soften the mince and let everything emulgate together. That's our pasty mix. Been cooking away for just over an hour now. And as you can see, all the vegetables are broken down, the potatoes are broken down, and help stick it all together. And the only thing left to do now is to let it cool down. Before we do that, as per usual, test it for seasoning. That to me, absolutely perfect. Don't need anything else, but always test it because once it's in the once it's in the basket, it's too late. So I always check it for seasoning. So that's ready to come off now, and we're going to let that cool for about an hour, as long as you can. Basically, you want it if you can, let it go cold, um, and then we can start making pasties with it. And so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to roll out our pastry. To do this. Make sure you've got a good dry clean surface, put a load of plain flour down, take your puff pastry, put it on top. A secret to rolling this pastry out is lo using loads of flour. It stops it sticking, it just makes life a little bit easier. And there you go, and also take it out of the fridge about an hour before you're going to use it and it just makes rolling it a lot easier as you can see. I'm not breaking a sweat or struggling at all. It's not one of my favorite jobs, but it's one of those jobs that has to be done. 
apologies to any bakers out there. I know it's your passion and I do have a passion for pastries. I just don't have a passion for rolling out pastry. That's a fair comment, isn't it? So what we want to do is try and get about four or five. We're going to get four out of this. And then we're going to use the off cuts to make a fifth one. And there are people out there who say you're not you're not supposed to do that with puff pastry. Well, I know that, but I've always done it, and it's always been fine. So it saves throwing that last, that little bit away when you can make another another pasty out of it. Simple as that, really, isn't it? Every little helps they say in certain stalls. So with your pastry rolled out, you can basically make them any size you want. Whatever size suits you. I like to make them quite big. So I use this, um, this bowl. And as you can see, they come out a good old size. Take your knife. Don't do this on your mum's best work surface because there's a possibility you might scratch it and she won't be letting you in the kitchen again after that because I'm gentle I know what I'm doing I'm safe and then take a little bit of flour sprinkle it on top Put your pastry over there, put your rounds over there, stick the other one on top. Make sure you give it a good sprinkling of flour before you put the other one on top because otherwise they'll stick together and when it comes to using them it will just be one big clog and you have to roll them out again which you really don't want to be doing. the rest of them out. Don't worry if they don't come out too round because you're going to be reshaping them anyway and you can just put them back into shape when you use them. If it is a little bit small for your last one just roll it out a little bit more. Simple isn't it? Not difficult. It ain't rocket science. A little roll like that. Fantastic. Absolutely perfect. A little bit of flour on top. And another one done. And then Collect up all these little pieces. Don't smush them about too much. Try and layer them on top of each other like that. And you should be able to get another round out of them. Just put them together like that. And so the next thing we're going to do, fill our pastries. Give it a little stir before you use it. And they go in there, just like that. 
give them a good filling, don't be tight. But also be careful you don't fill them too much because A, you won't be able to put them together and B, they might explode and go all over the place and you don't want that because it's messy. Use your initiative. Get some plain water, give the edging a good dousing. And I mean a good dousing because you really need these to stick. And then the next thing we do is because these are traditional pasties and not Cornish pasties we're going to make them like dinosaurs so bring them together like that and then simply squeeze them like that very simple and on your oven try sprinkle a bit of flour just to stop them sticking and that's your first one good to go and the same with all the rest Next thing you want to do is give them a little bit of a brush with some eggs and so after about 20 minutes our traditional pasties are ready to come out of the oven. Oh, look at those little beauties eh? What more could you ask for? Marvellous. Absolutely marvellous. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is yet another sexy little showstopper at any dinner table. Traditional beef pasty. The way it should be done. The way I like it. Proper. Thank you very much for watching. Hopefully see you on the next one.